introduce to you the oldest 28-year-old I've ever met, and I mean that in all the best ways. Um, he has a master's degree in leadership and business and development and training. He's trained Navy SEALs and overweight single moms. He has a passion for what he's going to share with you, and I, I believe in these, this may be a life-saving message that Cody brings to us. Give a, it's too late to give a warm Chippewa Valley welcome, but make him feel welcome. Cody Bobay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. If everybody could stand up real fast. Stand up before we get started. We're going to warm up with some jumping jacks. Get some. I'm just kidding. Sit back down. Sit back down. We're just playing. We're not going to exercise. <laughs> hey, guys. I am I'm pumped to be here with you. We have a little bit of time to go through a message that if you focus, if you, you know, I've been married for seven and a half years. I understand the difference between listening and hearing. How many guys can relate with me? <laughs> I want you to absorb what I'm saying. I don't want you to just give me the head nod. I want you to take in, take some notes, because what we're going to talk about, if you apply it, will change your life. I promise, 100%. If you listen, if you're here with me, it'll change your life. Man, I've been through a lot to get up here. Yesterday, I traveled uh, for Oklahoma City, where I'm from, up here, and I, it was comical how many things happened. Uh, I'm in Keith's shirt right now. Uh, my baggage didn't make it. <laughs> uh, uh, razor, but we, uh, I'm staying with Keith, I'm so thrilled to be here, but we, uh, we made it work, and I'm so pumped about this next little bit of time that we have. Because one of my favorite things in this world is to talk with people, but more specifically to talk with men about living excellence. The title of my message with you guys today is Bleeding Excellence. Now, with a lot of Packers fans, how many of you guys are Packers fans? Man, if you, yeah, even if you're not, you raise your hand in this room, right? <laughs> um, one of my favorite quotes of all time, other than a, uh, anything with scripture, one of my favorite quotes is from Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi said, excellence is achieved by the mastery of the fundamentals. Excellence is achieved by the mastery of the fundamentals. What are you doing outside of game day to get in your lifeblood mastery of the fundamentals? Excellence. And that's what we're going to talk about because I'm in the room with business people, with men that understand when you love something, when you're passionate about your work, your product, your sales, you put yourself into it and you emotionally get wounded. How many of you guys have just had one of those days where you didn't get physically cut, but you wish that you would have rather than the emotional pain you're going through? How many of you guys? Uh, okay, I have it man, multiple times because as males, we don't deal with emotions well. Emotions for us don't turn into tears a lot of times. They turn into rage. You know, you're driving home and then it's road rage. You guys ever? Okay, me alone again. Um, <laughs> so I have, man. I'm, I've been there. Um, but we don't know how to deal with that. So when, when you get cut emotionally, that's what we're talking about. Does what comes out is that excellence. And I, what we're going to talk about is with your health. Why? Why is it important for every person in this room to live healthy? A lot of people will be like, oh, that's for the young guys that want muscles. No. No, man, that's what we're going to go over at the start. It's for everybody. The why, who you are. How many of you guys have ever read Man's Search for Meaning, for meaning by Viktor Frankl? If, man, I'd recommend that. Please get it, read it. It's my kind of book, short book. Fly through it. It's a survivor of the concentration camps, and he writes his story about what is man's meaning. And my conclusion to this point in my wellness career, which has been a long dynamic one, is if your focus is strong enough on your purpose for living, you'll have the power to overcome any temptation. If your focus is strong enough on your purpose with living, on your purpose in life, you will have the power to overcome any temptation that comes before you. Now, why should you guys listen to me? Who is Cody Bobe? I've been through the fire in my life. Yes, I'm 28 years old. I, I served our country active duty for six years. I've flown in Operation Iraqi Freedom. I've lost friends. I've, I've, I've been around some of the most terrible situations that we could think of. It was in my time in the military where I learned the disciplines on why it's important to bleed excellence. The last two lines of the Sailor's Creed, committed to excellence and the fair treatment of all. 
Why? Why is that? Because when you're in battle, it's game day. You can't be practicing when you're in battle. And that's what I learned. That's what got ingrained into me is I have to be ready because if I'm not ready, it's going to cost somebody else's life. And that was a knowing. I helped train people to go in to be Navy SEALs that are still Navy SEALs today. Physically help them, mentally help them. I got trained for eight weeks by the Navy SEALs. I got challenged one time by this short little guy named Instructor Cassidy, who I was 18 years old at the time, so you know, I was, uh, nobody could stop me. So this guy, he's an instructor, and I just swam our race, and we did 20 pull-ups, and he said, I bet I can strap this 45 around my waist, and I'll beat you at pull-ups. I said, let's bring it, old man. <laughs> Thank God he didn't, after that, put me on the ground. Cause he, so I, at that point, I did 22 pull-ups. I was tired. I did 22, which is, man, that is for, still to this day is awesome. He did 45 with 45 around his waist. Those guys, those Navy SEALs that we have defending this country bleed excellence. And how many of you guys know one pull-up hurts? Like, I can't extend my, pull up, my arm because three days ago I challenged a guy in a gym. He's a special forces guy. I just challenged him to 15-minute pull-up competition. I told my wife that was one of the stupidest things I've ever done. <laughs> Yet yesterday, I spent about 13 hours sitting down in airports. Every time I'd sit down, I'd be like, wow, oh, my back hurts so bad. <laughs> so pull-ups are hard. Being a Navy SEAL, what do they go through? They have to hold their breath. They stand at attention. One of the things that they do, they, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of it, but one of the things they do, they stand at attention. You walk by. They don't know what's going to happen. Their instructor pushes them in the back. They fall into the water and have to swim underwater for 50 meters without coming up. I can't do that planning. Like I can't do it without anybody pushing me at the edge of the pool and then swim. But they have to do it. Why do they do that? Man, that's painful. Why do they go through hell week? Five days with no sleep, constantly pushing, constantly. I had one of my friends who was on SEAL Team 3, he showed me a picture. He texted me a picture after Hell Week when he went through basic underwater demolition school. And it was a picture of the inner part of his thigh. And it looked like somebody just ripped a chunk out of his thigh because of the chafing was so bad. This guy was a national champion wrestler that came out of Florida. He went on out of 151 people that started. He was one of the two that finished his graduating class. Why? Why could he endure so much suffering? Why do Navy SEALs put themselves through beating a young 18-year-old guy at pull-ups with a 45-pound weight around his waist and get 45 pull-ups? Because their purpose is stronger than the temptation to quit, than the temptation to eat the junk food, than the temptation to stop exercising, because they know if they do, they fail their country. How many of you guys have ever seen a Navy SEAL that was completely out of shape, would go to a donut place in the morning, would go to a fast food place in the afternoon, would feel emotional after a stressful day, and then go eat himself to sleep. I haven't either. I've done it. How many guys have done it? Anybody? No, me again? Okay, just me. I've done that. But why? Wouldn't that be a weird movie? Lone Survivor. I'm so pumped. How many of you guys have read the book Lone Survivor? If you, it's coming out. Motion picture. It's already out. Um, I didn't know it was already out, but I'm so pumped. Mark Wahlberg's the actor in it, but this is a movie about a Navy SEAL that's the lone survivor. It goes into a, a whole scene in Afghanistan, real story, got the Medal of Honor. Um, just an amazing story. Amazing story about a, a, a person that is committed to live, but people that gave the life of the country. Why? Why, why in the world do that? Why? It would be such a crazy movie if all of a sudden halfway through this guy goes to a fast food place in Afghanistan and he sits down and he starts stuffing himself and he's like, you know what, I'm done with this exercise stuff and his SEAL team's out there. He's like, you know what, I'm just going to take a couple days off. I'm going to have a Coke. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to stop. This exercise stuff isn't for me. And his SEAL team is there saying, what are you doing? We're waiting for you. We depend on you. For me to get back to my family, you have to come. You have to come with us. Well, that view, that perspective of healthy living should be something that we all have in our lives. How many of you guys have family? Man, I have two kids at home. I have a wife that's a stay-at-home mom. Uh, works a thousand times harder than I ever do. Uh, I have an almost three-year-old boy and a 14-month-old girl. I have a team looking at me saying, Dad, if you die, well, my wife will be a millionaire. So I have good life insurance. <laughs> Okay, so that's a bad example. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, life is about so much more than money. But I, I have a SEAL team that looks at me and says, Dad, I need you to be alive. 
My son needs me to teach him how to exercise, needs me to teach him how to say no to temptation because I became a Christian when I was 18. I did just about everything you could do in the partying lifestyle before then. I was an alcoholic. I, I did drugs. I sold drugs. I was, man, I was in it. I do not want my son going into that trap. My son is a handsome young man. And he's almost three. I don't want the temptation to be so strong that he can't keep his focus on his purpose, which is getting a successful career, doing good in high school, getting good grades, doing good in athletics, whatever he wants to put his mind to, and saving himself for his wife. Because I went the other way. Man, I, I, <clears throat> there's one female in here, so I'm going to be careful. I did everything that you could. And I know what that leads to. I know what it's like to wake up so hungover next to girls and not have any idea what happened. I know what it's like to contemplate killing yourself when everybody tells you you have everything in the world. You have everything going for you. You're popular. You could get any girl that you want feeding, and you're just broken and busted inside. I was a weightlifter. I, but nothing satisfied. I don't want my son to grow up with that because that's brutal. My, my family, I want my daughter to understand that I will always be able to kill any boy that she dates. <laughs> right? I don't need a shotgun. I could kill somebody 19 different ways with my bare hands. Like, I'm going to remind them that every time. But if I don't take care of myself, my family, my team is going to look at me and say, you're going to leave us to the wolves. We're going to die. What's the problem with our society? Men, the problem with our society today, this entitled generation is they don't have fathers in their lives. There's an attack on your life because you are, all of us in here, some of the most influential people in somebody's life or multiple people's lives ever. Your kids. I mean, my son looks at me. I had a Superman shirt on the other day and he has a Superman cup and he looked at the cup and he looked at my shirt, he looked at the cup and he looked at my shirt. He said, are you Superman daddy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And eventually I told him that I wasn't because I was like, he really believed me. I was like, no, buddy, I'm not Superman. It's just a shirt and it's a movie. He didn't catch it. But he thinks I'm Superman. And what I do with my life, my daily actions, if I am not committed to excellence, it impacts his life. It impacts my wife's life. If my focus of purpose isn't on me finishing strong in my marriage, and giving in to a temptation of a beautiful girl that hits on me. And that turns into an affair. Man, what have I done? What have I done? I've caused destruction that you'll never forget about in this life. I grew up in a broken home. My dad hated my mom. My, my mom hated my dad. Six months old, they were divorced. I got brought up with my dad. I know what it's like to get brought up in that. And I don't encourage anybody in here if that's happened to you, if you're living that right now, if you've done that, one of the greatest things about this life is there's hope. There's always hope. Now I'm a Christian. There's always hope for lasting change. I met Jesus when I was 18. I didn't think I could change. I tried to do good. I tried to save my virginity until marriage. One night I got so drunk I couldn't think, couldn't remember. I don't even remember. I had sex with a 27-year-old woman when I was 17. I held on to it, held on to it, and then just let go after that. I don't remember that night. Gone. But you know what's cool for a guy like me is there's hope. There's hope to change. But you know what's crazy? So I become a Christian when I'm 18, and I get born again. You know what's the exact same that didn't change? So I'm new. I still have the same stupid brain. I still have the same images of those party scenes stored in my hippocampus in my brain. No matter what I do, I'll always remember those. I'll always remember holding a guy, smacking him in his eye and blood squirting and that sound, and it was just rage coming out of me. And people cheering while I'm doing it and I'm hurting somebody because I'm so full of Red Bull and Jägermeister that I just don't care. 
And I go, uh, once the, you know, everybody's like, oh yeah, once that happens, and I go home and I throw up because I'm so sick from that noise. I will remember that the rest of my life. What I did, why it's so important for young men to keep pure, for all of us men to keep pure. What I did to my body, I will remember. I will fight with the rest of my life. Because when I became a Christian, I didn't get a new brain. I destroyed my brain. When I drank, I destroyed my brain, especially the age of the on a developing young man. What I did to my heart, when I got sexually engaged with a woman outside of marriage, my blood pressure went up, I emotionally engaged in something, and my endorphins fired in my brain. When I became a Christian, that didn't go away. That experience isn't wiped clean in my body. Eternally, the remembrance is gone, but in my body, it's there. My muscular skeletal system, the damage that I did to that, I still have scars on my knuckles from fighting. My nose, if you look really close, is a little crooked. Because, you know, fighting, you win some, you, you lose real bad sometimes. So what do I do with this body? Because if you're like me, it's one of the, the best gifts, gifts that you've ever been given. It is the only gift for you that you only get one of. If you're not a Christian, man, same deal. What, what, what is your purpose? The ultimate call of humanity, in my opinion, is love God, love and serve others. Let me tell you the science. What are you doing with your brain? Everything you eat might not go to your hips. Everything that you eat goes to your brain. So if you want to remember somebody's name, be like, man, I just can't remember somebody's name. And you're killing your brain with high fat, high sugar foods. Uh, I'm not going to talk about soda because I see some soda. I'm not calling anybody out. <laughs> don't, don't say soda, Cody. I won't say soda. Uh, soda, okay. We'll just get out there. I can't. I can't. It's like a bug light. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, so that's the 28-year-old coming out inside of me. If you want to be productive, the, the most productive you is the healthiest you. Test it. FMRI scans. If you want to test the strength of your brain, scary, we can do it with science now. Say, what's your output of your brain? What's your neural activity? Let's ask you some questions. Let's do an FMRI scan on your brain. For me as a Christian, it's fun. How much do you love Jesus? And you'll see the brain ignite. Oh, really? And it's fun with women. How much do you love chocolate? I'm telling you, it's crazy. Men and women, same exact response as men looking at pornography, women looking at commercials of chocolate. Keep that in your back pocket, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Our brain, you can tell what you're pouring into your brain. You can tell the health of your brain. When you exercise, thank God there's hope physiologically for guys like me. When you exercise, you increase this thing in your brain called BDNF. Brain-derived neurotrophic factors. What does that do? It gives birth to neurons. Drugs kill neurons. I killed a lot of neurons. I need as much intelligence as I can get. So when you exercise, you increase your ability to retain information. It's been tested time and time and time again. I just finished reading Spark. If you guys are interested in this topic, the best book I've ever read on the human brain by Dr. John Ratty, Spark. 30 years of science on the brain. You want to be your most productive and you say, I want, to, I want to be successful in my career. I want to change the world around me. It is impossible for you to do that and bleed excellence without taking care of your brain. And we're men. Like, I'm telling you, we're men. That's why we're here. It's so fun. Because as a man, how many of you guys would rather get punched in the face than go through emotional suffering? Man, I, like I, I could take a hit in the face. Please don't test me. But I could take one. But when you go through something, and I, I just experienced this last week, your wife is sick and she's in the ER, and you can't figure out what's wrong. Man, hit me in my face 15 times. Because that stinks. So I'm going to take you up on that. I'm going to hit you in your face this morning. <laughs> That was the whole story was saying, hey, this message stinks. It's hard. Uh, but I want you guys to leave change. And I promised you at the start, you will if you retain what I'm talking about. If you take the challenge to bleed excellence, to practice fundamentals 
of healthy living. Practice fundamentals. My challenge to every one of you. How many of you guys have written your goals down on paper? Be honest. The start of the year. I read a research study a week and a half ago that said 87% of our population has never written a goal down at the start of the year. That, so if I say I have a re re resolution and I don't write it down, that's a dream. But man, if, if you have a vision with action, Nelson Mandel said this, you take a vision and you take action, you can change the world. There's something incredibly magical about pen to paper writing stuff down. And smart goals, specific, measurable. You want measurable goals. But you want something, I, oh, I want a healthy 2014. Come on. I want, I want to do this, 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 and this. Set them specific for where you're at. Because fundamentals, man, we can't. You watch, how many guys, well, you might not like him as a person, but how many of you guys like watching LeBron James play basketball? I am an Oklahoma City Thunder fan. I should hate LeBron James. I love watching that guy play basketball. Kevin Durant, man, that guy that tall should not be able to dribble a basketball like, I'm six foot, I can't dribble a basketball like that. I have to go half the distance. But you know what Kevin Durant never stopped doing is dribbling. He learned that when he was a little kid. And that guy can dribble incredibly, but he never got away from the fundamental of dribbling. Drinking water. Your body's 60 to 70% water. Drinking water is a staple. It is a dribbling exercise. 64 ounces a day is a minimum for our country. 64 ounces, that's it. That's a half gallon. 80% of the headaches that we experience are self-induced because we don't get enough water. It's funny, man. I'll go. I do the work of a fitness evangelist. I travel and speak to churches. <laughs> I also speak to business leaders. Um, uh, in churches, I'll get people to say, man, I just want you to be praying for me. Okay, man, I'd love to. I believe in the power of prayer. It changed my life. What do you mean pray for? Ah, I get headaches all the time. Oh, yeah, you drinking water? No. You drink Coke? Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for some <laughs> discipline to come out of your butt. For the record, I don't say I'm not going to pray for him, but I do give him a hard time. Because a headache is a signal from your body. It's a warning signal. Something's going on. Why do Navy SEALs take such good care of their cardiovascular health? You'd think those guys would stop training. You'd think they'd hit this magical level to where they wouldn't have to unlock any more fitness. Why do they swim three miles a week? Why do they run constantly? Why are they doing 45 pull-ups with a 45 pound stinking weight around their waist? Why do they do that? Why do they push their heart so bad? Because they want to live excellent. Because when your heart is healthy, scientifically, you will live longer. Unless there's an accident, a freak death that happens, it happens, um, you'll live longer. Guaranteed, if your blood pressure is lower, your resting heart rate is lower, I promise your quality of life will increase. When you come home from a stressful day and your wife is a little, uh, I have a wonderful wife, but you know, if she's nagging you a little bit and your kids are crazy, you don't snap as easy. Why? Because when your blood pressure's up, what also increases? Your stress hormone called cortisol. Your body can only take so much stress at one time. Eventually you start to snap. You guys ever had those? Me, um, don't raise your hand. It's just me that time. So when you exercise, when you run, when you walk, when you cycle, do the elliptical, when you swim, it's not about the mirror. Because let me tell you, that is a fleeting mirage to chase. I've chased it. I, I spent one year of my life as a spokesperson for a sports nutrition company. Everywhere, not everywhere. Most of the places I went, I had my shirt off doing this line of work taking pictures, they wanted to see the abs, they wanted to see the muscles, they wanted to see the cuts. And it was hard for me because my knowledge on sports nutrition is really high. My knowledge on the human body is really high. But it wasn't regarded as, oh, Cody's here, he wants to, he's going to teach us something because that's what I do. Oh, Cody's here, he, he looks the part. Okay, cool. Next morning I'd wake up and look in the mirror and look at the most schizophrenic, crazy person I've ever seen in my life, my reflection. And all of a sudden, I'm three, 
and a half percent, four and a half percent body fat for a couple days at a time, and then I'd go back up to six percent and I'd feel really fat. I'm telling you this happened. And for one year, I served my body and not God. That mirror controlled me. And health isn't about your reflection. I, guys, I love my wife and I'm completely heterosexual, so I don't care what you look like. <laughs> like, I want for you to be confident, but I don't care what your reflection looks like. But the study of human science, if you are comfortable in your own skin, you're more effective as a human being. So what are we going to do to change that? Because the most difficult thing, I was talking with Dr. Aaron, Dr. Aaron, Dr. Aaron back here with Maximize Living. Love guys, love Maximize Living. Dr. Ben Lerner's book is one of the most influential books in my life, Body by God. Um, talking with him, and what is health? Health is like a balloon that you have to hit up that doesn't have helium. The rest of your life, it's never magically going to get full of helium and float to the ceiling and you don't have to mess with health anymore. I would pay a lot of money if I could do that. Because here's the truth. I hate eating healthy, and I hate exercising. I would rather sit in front of my TV, watch college football, even though I'm an OU fan, and they're, um, I'm glad that I'm speaking tonight so we don't have to watch that whole game in entirety. I'd rather sit in front of TV, watch college football, drink a Mexican Coke. How many of you guys have ever had a Mexican Coke? Wow. Yeah. That is fantastic. Drink a Mexican Coke, have some Mexican food, have some ice cream and a sopapilla. I know I'm, I look like a white guy, but I'm Mexican. I'm telling you, inside, man. But I want to do that instead of going to the gym, getting changed, doing pull-ups and push-ups and cardiovascular training. It's always uncomfortable. I always tell people, hey, was your workout, were you comfortable in your workout? And I'd be an honorary. They're like, yeah, man, it was great. I'm like, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. If you're comfortable in the gym, you're doing it wrong. Because a gym isn't a hangout. A gym is where you go to get sweaty. What is sweat? It's your body's temperature gauge and bringing your temperature back down because the process of thermogenesis is happening. What is the law of thermodynamics? The first law is you are burning calories inside of your body. And the first law of thermodynamics said, you, if you eat less and move more, you're going to get to your optimal weight. It's that simple. Everybody say, eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. One more time. Eat less, move more. Eat a little more less, excitement. Move more. That's it. There's your how. There's your how to healthy living. Promise. It's been tested. A doctor. Did you guys see the CNN study with the doctor that tested it with Twinkies? For a month, tested it with Twinkies. And it, his blood levels improved. His health improved. Weight went down. He just ate the right Twinkies for calories and ate less and moved more. It works. It's like, hey, man, I got bad genes. I got a you know, family overweight history, and I, don't, I can't lose weight. Like, okay, let's test it. The first law of thermodynamics is the same as the law of gravity. You go up on that building, you jump off that building. Let's see if you'll hit the ground. Let's just see, because I don't think you will, because I have a family history of people not hitting the ground when they jump off buildings. <laughs> the, law, the, the law of thermodynamics. It is impossible for you to not get to your optimal weight. Yeah, I got thyroid problems. Yeah, we all got issues in our, our bodies. I have a leg that's an inch and a quarter shorter than the, than the other one. I got issues. It happened from when I was a six-month-old baby. So yeah, I got a leg that's shorter. I got back pain. Um, I get some knee pain. Join the ranks. Science wins. Because I love men that... Focus on their purpose, stronger than their excuses, stronger on them, their temptations that say, I don't care what opposition I face, I'm going to go forward. Because that inspires me. I don't like watching, how many of you guys ever watch the Iron Man TV show? Where they go to Hawaii and they do it. I don't like watching the guy that wins. Like that doesn't move me. Like, oh, you just did your... Full Iron Man in an hour and 30 minutes. That's impossible. They didn't. But, you know, you watch that and it's like, I could never do that. I get teared up and I don't cry a lot. Um, I've cried like a couple times in our marriage. But every time we watch that, I get teared up. Literally, it's like, my, I pray my wife doesn't look over at me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, maybe you don't. But that's how I am. Of the person that barely finishes, that faced the most opposition, that shouldn't have made it, Everything was stacked up against them, but they did it anyway. Why? Because they made the decision not to quit. 
I'll never be the high performance athlete. But I will finish my life the guy that decided to never stop moving forward. Because what I have is heart. I have my focus on my purpose. I look at my kids, and that's part of my purpose. I look at my wife. She loves being a stay-at-home mom. That's her purpose. I'm helping her fulfill her purpose. I relate with the guy that says, I'm going to push no matter how bad it hurts. In Oklahoma City, I'm doing a citywide weight loss challenge for churches, so very similar. Um, it's something in the Christian church that's never been done. We're, we're having churches compete against each other. Crazy big prizes. Been on the, all the media stations down there. Uh, giving a brand new house to the winning church. Uh, I'm not giving it. Um, the, but a home building company is giving it. Uh, we're giving a four-year full-ride scholarship to a Christian university. Uh, to a Christian university, to a deserving student. So if these people, this church unites together, loses weight, they get to present that to somebody deserving in their church. So I have a nonprofit organization called Lose to Serve, and I tell everybody, what do you have in your life, because some people don't have weight to lose. What bad habit in your life do you have to lose so you can serve others more effectively? Because here's the deal. I pray. I pray all of you hear the message of what changed my life, and that's my relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you, I tried just about everything else. And it changed my life. But if you don't, if you don't believe in that, if you don't, man, at least give humanity your best. Because my promise as a Christian is this life isn't the good life. Because let me tell you, being stuck in Chicago for the time that I did, riding in a van from Minneapolis to here last night, late, in between two sweet women, but they were big mamas, you know, like, the heat, the guy had the heat on, full blast, and I'm sitting in between, and this girl's talking to me, she worked at McDonald's for 35 years, sweet, um, it smelled like she just ate some McDonald's, you know, I'm like, <laughs> like, if you're going to tell me, you're going to be a Christian, and life is going to be good, I'm going to smack you in your face, because life isn't good, life is hard. Life is hard. Tony Dungy said the quote after he wrote his book, Life is hard, but God is good, after his son committed suicide. Because life will beat you to your knees, like Rocky Balboa said. Life is tough. I'm 28 years old, and I look at life and say, Man, i got a long way to go, because I want to keep myself, I want to live long, die fast, or I want to die really cool, like the first missionary to jump out of airplanes to get into some remote countries and my chute doesn't open. You know, like, that'd be a cool story in heaven because we only get one song, one death song. Because I don't want to be walking around heaven and be like, hey, man, how'd you die? Because you get one story. You get one story. You can't make it up because, you know, like, people know. <laughs> like, oh, man, it was cool. You should have seen. No, that's not true. Okay, yeah, my heart attack. I died of a heart attack. Why did you die of a heart attack? Because you couldn't control your fork to your mouth. You wouldn't get up and exercise. That was too hard? Maybe that was too hard. I'll tone it back a little bit. <laughs> what, is, what is your death song going to be? We all die. William Wallace. Love that movie. All men die. Few men truly live. What are you doing in your life to give you true life? Because no matter what, it's hard. But I'm, I promise, if your blood pressure is lower, your diet is healthier, you're exercising regularly, you're going to improve the quality of your life. Why do people go in as sailors in our country and say, I want to be a Navy SEAL? They should get smacked in the face. Why do you want to be a Navy SEAL? Because I had a conversation with a guy, he was a black Navy SEAL, which is a little rare, because um, typically black people don't swim as well. Just science. You, you see it in the military. They know it. And he told me that. He was an ex-University uh, of Texas football player. And I wasn't an OU fan at the time, so I talked to him. <laughs> and I talked to him. He told me a story about being 1,000 meters away. And it was like Captain Phillips, but before. And he was 1,000 meters. It was cold. It was night. He had a SEAL team coming up on the hull of a ship. And he had to make a shot and kill the captain from 1,000 meters from a helicopter on a boat in the ocean. 
was like, I was like dude, that's awesome. I want to do that. I said, what, what do you think? What do you think about being an Navy SEAL? I'm cold, tired, and hungry all the time. And this guy is stone cold killer. Scary looking guy. So why do you do it? Because I love this country. Why? Why do you eat healthy? Why do you exercise? Because you love. Why do you go through hell? Why do you stand to defend the people that you love, the objects, the business that you love? Why? Why do you go through hell to do that? Your focus better be stronger on your purpose than the temptation. So I want to challenge you guys. I want to challenge you guys to think of your life in what we talked about today. You have a brain, you have a heart, you have a muscular skeletal system. Do you bleed excellence? Maybe you don't to this point. Maybe you do in some areas. Maybe emotionally you're bleeding excellence. Maybe spiritually you're bleeding excellence. But don't neglect your body. Because if you neglect your brain, your emotional intelligence is gone. You guys ever been around somebody that's dying from Alzheimer's? 10 second memory, you guys ever been around that? I got done speaking at a seminar and it was at a college with um, an incoming freshman came up and she was mad at me and I was like, oh no. And she was like, you said that people that die from Alzheimer's is, is a bad way of suffering. That's not true. And I asked her, have you ever been around somebody that's dying from Alzheimer's? I have. She said, yeah, I have. And she said, it's not suffering. I said, okay, well, you live for yourself. Have you ever looked at the family in the room that's watching that person die that can't remember who they are, that have been with them for the, their whole life, and that person dying cannot remember their name? That's suffering on other people. And my death song, I don't want my death song to bring pain to other people. Because if we're only focused on ourself, health doesn't really make sense. Because I promise, if you just focus on the reflection in your mirror and getting those six-pack abs, man, you're going you're to fall off the wagon. You're going to get those six-pack abs. You're going to have one donut and blow up. I've been there. It, it's a mirage. If your focus is on your why for living, like that Navy SEAL, if your focus is on what you love more than the temptation that you're going through, the hardship you're going through, the disappointment that you're going through. Because man, let me tell you, I've been burned. I'm an entrepreneur in ministry. So I have Bobe Fitness, which is a for-profit entity that funds into my nonprofit. I'm starting something that's never been done in the history of the church. My book this morning, I got an email from my book. Um, it was so cool. Marge South... West is a, is a big Christian bookstore. I got told five different times that my book would not go into their stores. You're just like any other fitness guy. How do you guys know that hurts? Like, yeah, it'd be like, oh man, get told no, but keep going. Yeah, but those no's suck. Yeses are fun. They're like, oh, and one guy said, and you're a self-published author. You can't be in our store. We don't take self-published authors. So I spent $100, created a publishing company. Put it on the back of my book, and now they're doing a promotion. My book is selling right next to Pastor Rick Warren's book, and they just sent out an email blast this morning with my book and Pastor Rick Warren's book right next to it. God is faithful. God is faithful. He's good. Life is tough. Perseverance pays off. But as business leaders, as leaders, men in general, don't neglect your health. Because your health is one thing that will stop you fast. Because you could be doing some sweet stuff with your business. You could be doing some sweet stuff with your family, have a vacation planned out. And then you have a heart attack. And you have a, maybe you have a stroke and you lose the functionality of the left side of your body. And you can never go on a cruise again without somebody pushing you. You can never wipe your butt without somebody helping you. Not my death song. I don't want that. On average, our generation right now, the entitled generation, will spend the last 12 years of their life assisted. 12 years. Nobody's wiping my butt for 12 years. Sorry, brother, you walked in at the wrong time. <laughs> I promise, I'm glad you're back. 
Hey guys, man, I am, uh, I am almost out of time. Please, please don't forget what we talked about. Um, you can follow me on Facebook. I have an odd Facebook thing. It's like a business page, but you look up Cody Bobe and you can like me. Uh, you stay up with my motivational tips, my exercise research, what I'm doing. Please, if you're a Christian, pray for the movement that I'm starting. In five years, my goal is to have it nationwide with churches. My book is over here. I give a 100% money back guarantee in my book called Lose 40 Pounds in One Day. If you want to come back tonight to renovate, same place, 6 o'clock, I'm going to talk about a Lose 40 Pounds in One Day experience, and I'm going to break down what it looks like through Scripture to live healthy and why that's important. So please come back. But this book, buy it. This book is a Christian book. So there is a warning. It's not marketed very intentional on top of it. Because I do present the love and hope of Jesus in this book. So if you don't like that, don't buy it. But if you're looking for a change and you need a resource, I have made this like Dave Ramsey for fitness. You can do it no matter what you Finish the 40-day journey in my book with the four fundamentals of healthy living that I've taught and got anywhere from Navy SEALs ready to go to buds to overweight single moms ready to get kicked out of the military and help them succeed. It's in this book. Short, simple, master fitness specialist. I have three of the top certifications in this country. I know what I'm talking about. This book is $10. There's also a DVD with it. It's a six-week small group study for churches. You can take a group through it. The DVD is 20. book is 10. The, the proceeds, the profit, goes into my nonprofit organization called Lose to Serve. There's information over there. I'm looking for people, if no pressure at all, to monthly support the organization. I'm modeling Billy Graham's ministry and fitness evangelism. Uh, my, my best friend, he's an NFL football player, supports it $12 a month all the way up. So please think about it. If you want this message to be heard to this country, please, I'd love your financial support. More importantly, I'd love your prayer. Most importantly, change your life. Because if you say, I don't need this message, soon it, you need health every day of the rest of your life. So let me know. I'm going to be up here when you have questions. Guys, I'm done. Thank you so much. I hope to see you back tonight. Thank you, guys. Hey, thank you. Thank you, sir.